this is my last Stranger Things video for a while. One thing I mentioned in my last discussion video about Stranger Things was just how good these characters are. Robin is a character who grew on me more and more as season 3 developed. When we were first introduced to Robin, I legitimately thought that the main purpose of her character was to help further break the love triangle between Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan. In other words, I suspected that her main purpose was to be a love interest for Steve, but we of course find out that that's not what happened. I began to thoroughly enjoy her character more and more as the season went on. This conversation that her and Steve share in season 3 is one of my favorite moments of the entire show, as it helps develop Steve and Robin in such a positive light and helps both of them grow in the series. Robin is just one example of a powerful female character in Stranger Things. We're introduced to one of the most powerful of the entire show, Joyce Byers, in the pilot of the series. Throughout the majority of season 1, Joyce is treated as a crazy, misguided mother and was accused of mixing loss and grief with insanity and lunacy throughout multiple points. Though, as we see from the start of the show, we know Joyce Byers isn't crazy. Sure, her outbursts are a little out there, but we still believe her and want so badly for her son Will to return to her. The moment she gets Will back in season 1 is so touching. And when they reconnect again towards the end of episode 8 of season 3, it immediately brought me back to that moment in season 1. Joyce's ability to take action no matter who has her back is what makes her so fun to watch. Another one of my favorite characters is Chief Jim Hopper. Jim gives the impression of being a lazy, unproductive cop in the beginning of the series, and to a degree, he kind of is. Sure, he's always had the qualities of being a great detective, fighter, and police officer, but these talents never really had to be tested until Will Byers goes missing. What I love about Hopper's character is that he isn't perfect, he's far from it. It took him almost the entire first season to put the pieces together on the truth behind Will's disappearance and Eleven's backstory, which is surprisingly realistic given that this show includes a giant monster that consumes humans and rats for breakfast. The case of Will Byers is not an easy mystery to solve. The cases of all three seasons are incredibly difficult to crack, and watching characters such as Hopper resolve the mysteries is actually what makes them so interesting to watch. And of course I love Hopper because he's such a father figure on this series. To all the kids on the show, he really feels like a protector and will always put his life on the line before anyone else's, which of course is what resulted in his potential death. Steve Harrington is another character that really, really grew on me. Funny enough, the Duffer brothers actually wrote Steve to be the villain of the show. And Billy likely wouldn't even have existed on this show if it wasn't for Joe Keery. Joe gave such a likable performance as Steve Harrington in season 1 that the writers decided to make Steve a likable character. Steve wasn't supposed to come back and help Jonathan and Nancy fight the Demogorgon during episode 8. We almost didn't get the notorious spiked baseball bat in action for the first time in season 1. And from there, Steve's character only grows. His relationship with Dustin is just pure gold in this series. I mean, at this point, they're basically just brothers. All four of these boys add something to the show. Mike Wheeler is a character who I've loved from the start. He's a leader, he's strong-willed, he cares tremendously about everyone around him, but is never afraid to speak his mind. I enjoy Dustin because of his comic relief presence that he adds to the show and his willingness to always try to bring his friends together. His friends are the most important thing in his life, and he's always reminding others to do the right thing and to always stick together. Then there's Lucas. He's certainly a risk taker, he's not afraid to get neck deep in the action, but he's also a very practical person who will try to keep his friends grounded and always push everyone towards the right direction whenever he sees fit. And in many ways, Max shares all of these qualities, which is what makes them such a perfect match for each other. Then there's Will. Noah Schnapp's performance in season 2 honestly still blows me away. The fact that they hired one of the show's best actors and saved some of his best acting moments for season 2 is just so fascinating to me. The poor kid is trapped in the Upside Down for 90% of season 1. He fails to escape its horrors in season 2 and is possessed throughout most of the season. And in season 3, when he finally has time to be a kid again, nobody's interested, everybody's ready to grow up. Will is kind-hearted and always wants what's best for those around him. Then there's the one and only Billy Hargrove. In season 2, Dacre Montgomery was incredible at playing this tough, villainous, racist, lowlife dickhead that you just love to hate. But in season 3, we somehow were able to feel for him and actually really care about him. We learn of his harmful upbringing and we can feel his pain. And his sacrifice to save Eleven was just perfect in so many ways. And speaking of which, my favorite character of the entire show is certainly Eleven. <laughs> In each season, the Duffer Brothers managed to find ways to make me love her character more and more. 
In season one, the mystery behind her is what makes her so intriguing. Who is this girl? How does she have these abilities? Who is this man she keeps calling Papa? And when we learn of her abuse, and we learn of how she gained these abilities, and when we see her grow a relationship with these four boys from Hawkins, Indiana, we truly start to love and appreciate her for her strength. In season two, we get to dive deeper into her upbringing and we can better learn of Eleven's place in this world. She finds her purpose through Hopper. She finds her home. Going home. We also get a look into her full abilities, which she needs to save the world from the upside down by the end of season two. And in season three, we of course get to see more amazing scenes with Eleven's powers, but we also get a look into Eleven without Mike, without these four boys. Through her relationship with Max, we get to see Eleven discover another side of herself. She can further become her own person through her relationship with another character. I love the way Stranger Things does this. This show has a way of bringing characters together who you would never expect to collaborate. I certainly never saw Dustin and Steve becoming friends, for instance, because there was no connection between these two whatsoever in season one. Steve is Dustin's friend's sister's boyfriend, yet somehow these two become one of the best dynamic duos of the show. Then you have Mike and Will bonding in season two. I mean, this is a little bit different because Will was part of the main cast's friend group, but we truly got to experience the connection between just those two in the second season. Then there's some random team-ups like Scott Clark and Joyce, or Erica Sinclair partnering with Steve, Dustin, and Robin, and all of these characters mesh so well together. Stranger Things is truly a piece of art, and that's for many reasons as I explained in my last video essay, but the most important reason is certainly its characters. Feelings. Jesus. <laughs> the truth is, for so long I've forgotten what those even were. I've been stuck in one place. In a cave, you might say. A deep, dark cave. And then I left some egos out in the woods and you came into my life. And for the first time in a long time, I started to feel things again. I miss playing board games every night. Making triple-decker ego extravaganzas at sunrise. Watching westerns together before we doze off. But I know you're getting older. Growing. Changing. And I guess, if I'm being really honest, that's what scares me. I don't want things to change. And so I think maybe that's why I came in here, to try to maybe stop that change. To turn back the clock. To make things go back to how they were. But I know that's naive. It's just not how life works. And yeah, sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's sad. And sometimes it's surprising. Happy. So you know what? Keep on growing up, kid. Don't let me stop you. Make mistakes, learn from them. And when life hurts you, because it will, Remember the hurt. The hurt is good. It means you're out of that cave. But please, if you don't mind, for the sake of your poor old dad, keep the door open three inches. Good kid. You did so good.